All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. And today I'm gonna to be giving you guys a special behind the scenes look at how I make videos. Oh geez, I'm in the dark there. <laughs> okay, so um, first before we get into the, uh, the nitty gritty, I'm gonna show you the uh, equipment and stuff that I'm using. So here we go. Okay, so the equipment that I use the most is my uh, GoPro Hero 4 Black Edition. I also have the, uh, the standard uh, plastic case for it as well, but this is the case that I'm currently using. I use this to make like my car vlogs and when I was out in Japan, my bicycle vlogs and things like that. And I also got an extended life battery pack for it as well, so good stuff. Then I have my Zoom H2N external microphone. So this is really helpful for getting a nice uh, professional quality sound. And I also have the H1 as well. It's much smaller and somewhere at the moment. So yeah. Um, and I also got the windscreen for this as well. So it helps against, you know, wind noise and popping noises and stuff like that. So good stuff. And then uh, my other camera is the Sony Alpha 5100. So this is the mini uh, DSLR. And uh, for making videos, I use the, uh, the kit lens just because it doesn't make a whole lot of noise when uh, when I record. And I'm just kind of sitting in front of it anyway, so this is what I use to make a lot of my stationary videos and to take my pictures on Instagram. Instagram.com slash theandysan <laughs> if you aren't already subscribed, so yeah. And the uh, the lens that I use, part of the mess, for uh, making pictures and stuff like that, taking pictures rather, is this one, the 18 to 200 uh, E-mount lens. And the camera that I'm currently using, hey, is this one right here, the Sony CX430V with balanced optical steady shots. <laughs> so this has been my main camera for a while now, and I use it mostly for uh, my out and about videos just because it has great stabilization and it's just good for outdoorsy stuff. And uh, another little trick here is I have a, a polarized uh, UV filter lens filter on all my cameras, except for my uh, GoPro Hero 4. But that's gonna be remedied soon. I just had one on order, so that's gonna be coming soon. <laughs> so if you guys follow my car vlogs, they're about to get a lot nicer looking, so stay tuned for that. So uh, that's my basic uh, gear setup. Also, from time to time, use my cell phone, which at the time of this recording is an LG G4. For my uh, editing stuff, now since I don't have my uh, can't, or my computer capture equipment right now. You'll just have to bear with me. Because um, normally I edit on my uh, custom desktop PC, known as the Chillbox, um, but that's currently uh, being shipped to me from Japan, so uh, I use, for now, my Asus um, X550, or 550L. The unboxing of this particular laptop was actually one of my uh, most viewed videos at the time of this recording, so that's, Another interesting thing. So um, I use this to edit my videos uh, for now. Once I get my uh, desktop back, it'll be like my second, my secondary editing rig, you know, in case something goes wrong or, you know, if I need to edit more than one video at one time. So yeah, or just edit on the go. That's what I mostly use it for. Like if I'm home and I need to edit something, I use this. So um, anyway, so for the purposes of this video, I put together a little test clip, uh, both in video and audio format right up here. So I'm just gonna give you a quick little down and dirty of how I edit stuff. And just a little disclaimer, this isn't meant to be like a, uh, you know, this is the one and only way to edit things or anything like that. First we'll go to uh, Vegas Pro. So at the time of this recording, and I do get updated versions of stuff, but uh, my main rig, as far as editing and stuff, I only use two programs, and that's uh, Sony Vegas Pro, and then Audacity for editing audio. And then Vegas Pro, I use version uh, 13 at the time of this recording, then Audacity is version 2.0.5. So like I said, obviously if they come out with updates and stuff, I'll update as necessary, but that's just what I'm working with right now. Basically what I do for editing and stuff like that is I get rid of a lot of the pauses and stuff like that typically. You notice here there's uh, three loud spikes 
right here. So I use this to sync up the uh, the audio. In this case, because I usually uh, sync up the talky portions and everything to the audio, but there's not a lot of audio marks to go by. So what I would do is bring in the audio from the Zoom H2N, which is what I have up right now, and then you see the same three spikes. And then uh, I'll just show you how I edit audio first, and then we'll get to the video portion, and then syncing it up and all that stuff. So what I typically do for this, and uh, I may tweak and peek as necessary depending on my setup and stuff like that, this is just the, uh, the general way I do things. So I convert my stereo track to mono, and the reason I do this is because um, when I use compression and a lot of other um, effects and modifications and stuff like that, sometimes you get a weird, uh, I call it a ping pong effect, where like sometimes you hear the audio in the left side and then sometimes it's on the right, but it's not on the left. You know, it's only in like one side or the other. And it's, it kind of reminds me of like a ping pong ball going from one side of the court to the other. It's like boop, 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 boop. Anyway, I convert it to a mono track, and then at the end, once I'm all done, I'll reconvert it to a stereo track, which we'll get to here in a sec. So, once that's all done, I go to Compressor, and uh, here are my uh, custom settings for compression, so I'll just leave that there if you guys want to take note or whatever, and feel free to pause the video if you need more time. So anyway, moving on, hit OK, we'll compress. And you notice you'll get to see a little more detail over here, but there's still these spikes. So, um, typically if uh, the spikes are like too big after compression, then I would just undo it and then you can kind of see where they were before. So I usually just go a little uh, beforehand, highlight that part, and then go back and uh, redo the compressor. Then you can see they're obviously a lot louder than uh, they were before. So uh, basically what compression does, for, for those of you who don't know, is it takes a lot of the loud parts of your audio and makes them a bit quieter so that way they're more even in the mix. So just as a the basic gist of it. So from compression we go to uh, bass and treble. Now when I use compression, something I've found is that um, it tends to add a lot of bass, which can be good for some setups because there's a lot of uh, microphones and stuff like that that are very treble heavy. So adding bass can be a good thing, but typically I find that you know it adds a little too much bass, so it sounds very muddy in the mix. So what I do here, and obviously change these values as necessary, the bass and treble depending on the setup. Like sometimes, like with the GoPro, it adds a lot of bass. So I have to actually cut more bass and then add treble because it's so bassy you can't really understand what I'm saying. So you have to change it per setup. But you know, typically, I usually do like a, uh, a negative three decibel cut for bass and treble, typically. And then for level, I put it at negative three. Now why are you make it quieter, Andy? I'll show you. So once we do that, you see that there's no more peaking or anything like that through here, so you're not gonna get any of those big spikes. So that's the reason I do it. Now to bring it back up, I do this thing called normalize. And what normalize does, it's, it's very similar to compress, com, compressing, but instead of making the loud parts more quiet, it makes the quiet parts a bit more loud. So it's just another way that it evens out the mix. and. Uh, here are my settings here, I uh, move DC offset, that's kind of why we do that. <laughs> then I bump up the maximum amplitude to negative 0.5 to get it as loud as it can without peaking. And since it's a mono track, obviously you don't need to normalize the stereo channels. So, like that, and you can see it's a now. But it's not peaking, it's close, but not quite, so. And then from there you just uh, repeat the process one more time. Compression, okay, squishes it down into a lot more even sounding mix. Bass and treble, same thing. Squishes it down, go to normalize, bumps it back up. And as you can see, it's a much more even sounding mix, or even looking, rather, mix. And you still get the little spikes over here in the corner, which will play a big part uh, in the next little bit. So, um, we'll just highlight the whole thing. And I'm using key commands here just to 
uh, speed things up. So um, basically I just copied the top part here and then I'm going to uh, put the copy down there, go over here, and then make stereo track right there. That obviously makes it a stereo track. And so from there, go to file, export, and then I'll export it as a wave or an uncompressed uh, file. So you just have to add the little dot wave extension there. And the reason I do that is to avoid uh, quality loss, bit loss, whatever it's called. You know, because I, I go through a lot of iterations of these things, so the less quality loss, the better. So wave, 32-bit float, okay. And I typically put like a one or something at the beginning, just to differentiate it from the original file. You know, you can do whatever, but that's just how I do it. So yeah, I don't really need the metadata, and it's already pretty much done. It only takes like maybe a second or two tops to do it. Drag that onto the thing, and you can see there's a lot more uh, audio data here that you can play with. But the three spikes are over here, and then the three spikes are right here. So uh, the reason I do the spikes is to help with syncing up the audio for external mics. To make this video, you know, the video that you're watching right now, I'm using uh, just the internal mic, so I don't need to sync this up. But if I'm using uh, an external mic, which I typically do for like concerts or sit down videos or something like that, then I would use an external mic. And I use the claps to uh, sync up the audio here. So you basically just, you know, zoom in as much as you can and try to sync up the spikes here. That sounds pretty good. I'll take out the headphones here so you guys can hear it. So, let's give it a shot. And notice the hand movements. So I'll mute the top part. Seems pretty good. And then uh, play them all together. Okay, cool. So now that's all synced up, you can go and uh, get to the beginning part, which is much easier to find on the fixed audio down here because you can actually see the waveform. So I try to line it up like about here, I should say. So. All right, guys. So this is just a. All right, guys. So this is just a. I believe like a very very slight pause. About. All right, guys. So this yeah, is about there. So, um, hit S to split the track. Then I just you know, delete it. Whatever. And then since the front part's already synced up, you know, I just move it back, move it back. Audio is already synced up and everything. So um, if I would use the original um, internal mic track, then I would edit it along with this. But typically what I do for the sit down portions is I just delete it all together. But for concerts, I usually like to leave it in. So that's just what I do. So. All right guys, so this is just a quick little test clip to show you guys how I edit videos. And okay, cool, so we got that. And uh, so in addition to editing the audio in Audacity, I also uh, do a little tweaking and peeking in Vegas as well. So I go to the uh, plugins over here, and then I only use two plugins typically when uh, editing, dealing with audio and stuff like that. So I use the compressor, or the compressor, <laughs> the compressor, <laughs> the, comp the track compressor, and then track EQ. So I put the compressor first, and then EQ second. So I have my own little preset for uh, compression, so you can just, you know, take a little time, write it down, or whatever you like. So I have that up front, and what that typically does is it also boosts it a little bit. So to avoid peaking, I typically, um, reduce the uh, the gain by about five. Sometimes a little less, just depends, but typically five is about what I do. So from there, go to EQ, and for the vocal portion, or just the me talking portion, I have a, uh, a certain EQ. This is the one I've been using 
lately is the high-low cut too and what this does is it cuts the bass and the treble but it also boosts the mid frequency here but we'll break this down bit by bit just so that way you guys can kind of see the method behind the madness here so um, on the low end we have a low shelf uh, frequency cut and this is typically done to again reduce a lot of uh, unwanted bass with compression um, a lot of youtubers like the bass but sometimes it can get a little much and you can sound like really muddy in the mix so um, depending on my setup I might cut it a little less it also you know helps reduce that rumbly noise so I might I may uh, cut more depending on what's going on in the background but this is the typical go-to setup that I have so um, from there we go to the treble cut and this is what I typically use for a lot of that hissing noise so if you hear a lot of hiss in the background and a lot of that like snappy you know like that, that kind of noise you know this you know tends to cut that so um, I usually start around 5k and then uh, cut as much as needed but I don't want to cut too much because if I cut too much then you know you tend to lose a lot of detail as well so that's why this cuts a bit less than the uh, the base cut because I can afford to cut more bass than treble so now we move on to my secret weapon here which is the mid frequency boost now the reason I do this is so that way my voice can uh, cut through in the mix because you know I also add uh, music and stuff like this too to uh, to my videos so in order for my voice to be heard above the mix without you know mixing the music way way down you know so you can still hear the music but not to the point where it's overpowering my voice is I have this little mid frequency boost and it's around 1.3 uh, K Hertz or 1300 Hertz and uh, the reason I do that is that it's the uh, uh, the typical frequency range for the human voice so I just have it on like a little a very small band so I can get a slightly broader frequency rather than straight you know 1300 and then I give it like a little boost typically around three decibel boost sometimes I boost it a little more but if it starts sounding too honky or too nasally sounding then I cut it back but three is typically my go-to for boosting and stuff like that so that's my secret weapon for uh, cut for uh, voice cutting through in the mix now uh, for music I do the same stuff that I do with the voice you know same compression settings but for the EQ it's a lot different and you'll notice it's almost the opposite in a way of my uh, vocal things because this is my vocal EQ and here is my music EQ you can see it's almost almost the opposite so um, with my uh, vocal track, I tend to cut a lot of bass and treble, and then for music, I boost it because it helps you know fill in the frequencies that I cut from my vocal track, so it helps even out the mix a lot more. And then around the two, I typically find like for my style of music that I use is a lot of drum and bass, so you hear a lot of you know the thumpy bass. So to prevent it from completely overpowering the mix, I have a very slight bass cut around the 300 hertz range just you know negative three decibels nothing too major but it helps kind of reduce the thumpiness the overpowering thumpiness of the bass and then for here I have the uh, same exact cut for uh, the human voice so 1300 hertz so I have it and typically what a lot of uh, audio engineers call this is the pocket the vocal pocket because it you know, it's a cut so that also helps so that way the music vocals don't clash with uh, the speaking portion of your audio so in addition to boosting that frequency in the vocal track I also cut it in the music track just to make sure that that you guys can hear me in the uh, the mix here and then from there uh, I go you know I just render it I have my own uh, special rendering settings so depending on the frame rate you know typically I use 60 frames per second as of late so I have frame rates for like 25 30 40 stuff like that and uh, you now just render it from there and you know 
do it that way. But uh, that's just if I'm syncing up audio with a mic. Now, if I were to just use the internal camera um, audio, typically what I would do first is I would do all my edits and everything. And then once all my edits are done, then I would convert it as a wave or an uncompressed audio file. Uh, so 48K Hertz, 32-bit wave. So as uncompressed as possible. Then I would go in, do the same uh, audio edits that you saw me do with the, uh, the mic audio and Audacity, bring it back into the timeline, and then just go from there. So basically the same process, but that's the uh, general gist of what I do for editing audio and video for YouTube. So yeah, this is the Andy Son. Sign up for now, thinking you guys, Pook, for uh, joining me on my little how I make videos and what equipment I use, sort of behind the scenes look at, uh, you know, how I do the things I do. And I also wanna thank you guys for uh, watching my other stuff. And like I said before, if you guys have any uh, questions or anything like that about how I edit specific things that I may or may not have covered in this video, you know, feel free to leave me a comment below in the boopity boop or uh, send me a personal message. And as I always say, I read all the comments and I do read all the personal messages, so. With that said, also want to thank you guys for liking, the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party, and hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.